as Chris mentioned, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, one possible tool that the state could use uh, to increase its revenue, uh, and that's to increase its level of, of sin taxes. So I'd like to start out by first defining or describing what I mean uh, by sin taxes. So at a very general level, uh, sin taxes refer to any taxes uh, on goods that society perceives uh, as undesirable. Uh, so uh, typical examples include things like uh, taxes on cigarettes, uh, taxes on alcohol, uh, or, or gambling. Um, and indeed, these, these are the goods that I consider in my analysis. Um, but we could also um, apply the, uh, the idea to tax on other goods, uh, like, for example, tax on soda, uh, which is something that the state considered uh, earlier this year. Uh, so a, a key feature uh, of these taxes is that they are typically perceived as voluntary uh, in the sense that you only pay the tax uh, if you consume the good. So uh, unlike, for example, an income tax or a sales tax, uh, which are generally inescapable, uh, it's easy to avoid paying a cigarette tax by simply uh, not purchasing cigarettes. So uh, there are a few advantages uh, that accompany uh, sin taxes. So uh, one is that uh, they can increase uh, efficiency uh, by mitigating the effects of negative externalities. So if we consider secondhand smoke, for example, um, uh, a smoker who consumes cigarettes emits secondhand smoke, uh, which can harm the health of others uh, around him or at least be unpleasant uh, to others around him. Um, so that, that's something that we would call a, a negative externality. Uh, or if we consider alcohol, if we think of a, a drunk driver, when they get into an accident, they harm not only themselves, uh, but also anybody else who was involved in the accident. Uh, so in these cases, an, an increase in the level of sin taxes uh, can, can mitigate uh, these externalities at least somewhat by forcing the consumer to internalize to some extent uh, uh, the negative consequences that their consumption imposes on, the others, on others around them. Uh, another advantage uh, of sin taxes is that uh, they can improve uh, public health. Uh, so for, again, returning to the example of, of cigarettes, if we increase the tax on cigarettes, uh, this can cause a decrease in the level of smoking, and this in turn can help save money for the state by reducing the amount of money it needs to spend on Medicaid expenditures uh, that are attributable to smoking-related illnesses uh, like lung cancer or emphysema, uh, et cetera. So, and finally, I'd, I'd like to note that uh, another advantage of these taxes is that they tend to be uh, more politically palatable uh, than other revenue alternatives. Uh, and this, this relates to some of their features that I've already noted. Um, certainly, uh, if you're, for example, a non-smoker, uh, a cigarette tax is not going to uh, bother you too much because it's, you're not, it's not something you're going to have to pay, right? So uh, in these senses, it's a smaller set of people that are paying these taxes, also because they come with some of these other perceived advantages, such as improvements in public health, uh, a lot of people find that uh, these taxes uh, come with benefits that other tax increases uh, don't come with. So uh, for these reasons and, and a few others, politicians often find it easier to raise these sorts of taxes uh, than other sorts of taxes. Uh, that said, there's also certainly a, a few disadvantages uh, of these taxes as well. Uh, so one is that uh, they're less uh, economically efficient uh, than a broad-based tax, uh, like a sales tax. So a sales tax uh, is broad in the sense that it taxes uh, all goods equally, and it doesn't favor uh, one good uh, over another. So a sin tax is uh, almost the opposite of this. Uh, it's a very narrow tax that targets just a few goods and leaves other goods untouched. So a lot of economists uh, don't like this because it introduces an inefficiency because it causes consumers uh, to favor certain types of consumption uh, over other types of consumption as a result of the tax. Uh, a second disadvantage associated with these taxes is that they tend to be paid for disproportionately uh, by the poor. So it, it's well known the poor spend a much larger fraction of their income uh, on, uh, on goods like cigarettes, alcohol, and gambling uh, than wealthier individuals do. 
So as a result, if you raise the taxes on these goods, uh, the poor will shoulder a disproportionate burden uh, of the tax uh, relative to, uh, to higher income individuals. And then finally, another issue is that uh, one must be cautious uh, with these taxes in that if you raise them too high, you may encourage consumers uh, to flee the state and to purchase these goods uh, in neighboring states that have uh, lower taxes. Uh, so it's been uh, noted in, uh, in some good work by David Merriman, for example, that the, the existing already fairly large tax differentials on cigarettes uh, between Chicago and neighboring jurisdictions uh, appears to cause uh, individuals to go purchase cigarettes uh, in, in another, in another jur jurisdiction in order to avoid uh, the high taxes in Chicago. So that's something that we always have to be uh, aware of when we increase these taxes. So one of the things that uh, I consider in my analysis uh, is to try to answer the question, how much revenue could the state of Illinois raise uh, by increasing uh, the, the levels of its sin taxes? So in order to answer that question, I consider three hypothetical tax increases, a tax increase on cigarettes, uh, a tax increase on alcohol, uh, and a tax increase on uh, casino gambling. And I uh, do something very simple. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, for simplicity, assume uh, that these tax increases uh, do not increase cross-border shopping. Uh, that is, I'm going to assume that they don't cause individuals to, to purchase these goods uh, in the neighboring states at, at a rate higher than they already do. So uh, by making that assumption, I'm going to be essentially estimating an upper bound or what is the maximal amount of revenue that the state could raise uh, uh, by increasing these taxes. So the table on this slide shows the, the hypothetical tax increases that I consider in my analysis. So uh, the, the last column there shows what the tax increase, uh, the hypothetical tax increase is. So for cigarettes, I'm considering an increase uh, in the tax rate of uh, 50 cents uh, per pack. Uh, for alcohol, I'm considering increases of 15 cents, 30 cents, and $3 per gallon respectively for beer, wine, and spirits. To put those numbers in, in context, uh, these tax increases correspond to about 1.4 cents per beer, 1.2 cents per glass of wine, and about 3.5 cents per drink uh, per spirits. And then finally, uh, I also consider an increase in the income tax for casino gaming uh, of, of 5%. Uh, so overall, you can see this is a fairly a modest tax increase. Uh, these are not uh, massive increases uh, as compared to some of the historical increases. That, uh, the state of Illinois has levied, um, but they're also not trivial increases either. Um, uh, if we look, looking now at the, at the next table, uh, this shows how much revenue I estimate the state could raise uh, from each of these individual tax increases. So if we look at the, the first row in the last column, I estimate that the 50 cent uh, the tax increase on a pack of cigarettes would increase the state's annual revenue uh, by approximately $175 million per year. And if we total these numbers down across all the rows, uh, I estimate that uh, uh, altogether these tax increases uh, would increase the annual state revenue uh, by approximately $330 million per year. Um, so the last thing I want to do is sort of try to put these numbers in context and uh, try to think about what the, the takeaway is here. Um, so it's certainly true that an increase in the sin taxes for the state uh, could raise revenue um, uh, with the cautionary note that this may have efficiency and distributional costs. In particular, the majority or most of, if not the majority of the revenue would be raised uh, from lower income individuals. Um, putting those issues aside, uh, under these uh, sort of rosy assumptions, modest increases in these taxes could generate about $300 million, maybe a little bit more, uh, in annual revenue for the state. But to put that number in context, IGPA and other work uh, has estimated that the state's annual budget shortfall uh, it will reach approximately $14 billion per year uh, by 2025. Right? So that means that the, uh, the sin taxes, even under these rosy uh, estimates, uh, would only fill about 3% uh, of this gap. So uh, what this means is that although sin taxes could, can possibly be part of the solution 
to the state's budget woes, uh, the bulk of any additional revenue collection is going to need to come from other sources. 